Guys, so we are headed to an excavation job site today. A uh, buddy I went to high school with named Dave. Um, his family is very, very big into excavation. Um, I'm actually going to be running. We've got a demo, some sort of caterpillar, skid steer, uh, track loader actually. So I'm pretty excited to run that. But he called me in a couple days ago and he's like, hey man, I need a guy that can run a machine for me. Um, help me out with this project I'm on. So. That happens a lot in excavation. Um, guys that would be, you know, quote competitors, they help each other out a lot. Um, so I'm gonna head over to his site. We're gonna check it out. One real cool thing about Dave, and you guys are gonna be able to meet Dave. Um, but like I said, we're the same age. His family came from a really big background in excavation. I think he's like third generation. Um, but Dave started buying machines pretty much right when we got out of high school. Um, I was in college at the time. I was probably like a sophomore in college. Um, Dave bought his first bulldozer. It was a Deer 450. I think we're gonna see uh, that guy out there today. Um, then about a year later, he bought a second 450. Um, those are like $80,000, $100,000 machines. I think on his first one, he put down like 30,000. That was kind of like savings he had from the first year and a half out of college, living at mom and dad, just working, saving up money. Um, threw that down, and I think the second one they gave him like 10,000 down. Um, but anyway, he's got himself into these machines for like 1,100 bucks a month to like $1,500 a month, and then he rents them to construction um, contacts of his, you know, l r large road construction, neighborhood construction type of stuff. Um, he rents these things, uh, and I think he fetches like over two and a half, three grand a month for these things. And then of course, when he um, does his own projects, he makes like, you know, bank on them as well. Um, what's interesting about Dave is like three, I guess we're like four years out from that, four or five years out from that. Um, he's got one of his dozers, I think is almost paid off. The first one he bought, it's compl almost completely paid off. I think the second one is not far behind. And then he has a big uh, loader, like a daddy size loader. And then he's got a John Deere 250 excavator, which is like a house. It's like $180,000 machine. And then he has a Volvo 400 he just ordered. And he's got a few pumps too, like some water pumps, like I don't know what those things cost, but for draining lakes and things like that. Um, but he rents these primarily to his, uh, was to his dad's company. That's how he started. So he had an anchor client. Um, anchor clients will definitely set you up in business. If you can find one guy that has a lot of demand, and you have a good relationship with him. It's dangerous because you don't want all of your business to be wrapped up with one contact. Um, but uh, he has then sent branched out and started working with other excavation guys. So he'll rent these things typically for a month at a time, sometimes for multiple months, but they go to like a neighborhood project and then once the streets are in, they don't need the dozers anymore and they move to the next job site. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty neat business model because, um, it can be done on the smaller side. You can start it with power washers. I mean, you can start with an $800, two $800 power washers. If one breaks, you switch it out to the client, you know, $50 a day to rent it, whatever. Um, but the ROI on equipment rental is there because you literally just have your money out working for you and you have your time. Um, now, obviously there's maintenance and depreciation on the machines. It's another subject. Um, but typically the rental business is really, really good. And Dave is on the, he, he's on the niche, he's niched on the higher side. Um, I like the Bobcats and the, the mini excavators. I like the smaller side because um, if we get a economic downturn, um, I like to be able to, uh, I, I feel like I can do more things with the Bobcats. They're easier to transport. I can transport them with 3,500 trucks. I can even transport them with F-250 type of trucks. Um, they're good for landscaping. They're good for supplying. That's why I like the supply business because it keeps my machines. Um, my machines make X amount of dollars a day. Normally it's like four or $500 a day in revenue but then the supplies might make another $1,000, $2,000 a day in revenue. The margin on those supplies might be 30%, 50% sometimes. So it just is a nice compliment. Um, and it lets me compete with suppliers, it lets me compete with Bobcat, you know, site work, smaller type of guys. But neither one of them is really competing with me because I've got the landscapers covered on side pallets, mulch pallets, ripping out a tree, installing a tree. So we pretty much, you know, have that market kind of cornered. Um, but Dave is a really, really interesting case study because he has himself, um, now like, let me, let me, let me say one thing. If the economy does fall out on Dave, um, he could be with those bigger machines, he could be struggling to find projects or people to rent them. And that could be an issue. 
Um, but these machines all pay off. Uh, every time he buys a machine, they pay off in five years' time. So he's playing this interesting game where he's using credit. He's working a machine hard for five years. The machine pays off. He then has his equity from it. He's made a little bit of money along the way. And then he can choose, do I get it back into another machine with another payment? Or do I run these older machines and just keep them well maintained? And the great thing about heavy equipment is, typically you can get about twice the life after the payment. So if the you know payment was five years, you're probably gonna get another five years of service, maybe even 10 years of service beyond that point. And, you know, to have a 10 or 15 year old, you know, uh, John Deere 250 excavator is not uh, unheard of. You know, that's very, very common. Um, those type of machines will go 15,000, 20,000 hours, sometimes with rebuilds in between, obviously. Um, but it's a really, really cool model because once Dave has his stuff paid off, um, Dave's dozers are gonna pretty much just make him like six or seven grand a month as long as he's got the phone working and he can keep them from job site to job site. And Dave's type of kid, he has contacts all over the state of Florida um, and he you know, makes an effort to travel around enough and do enough interesting stuff to meet enough interesting people to where um, he keeps those things pretty, pretty well booked. Another way he keeps them booked, I know, is he'll just ride up on someone's job site. So they're building a road in Tampa, you know, hour up the street. Um, he'll just ride up to a job site and stop and talk to the foreman and get a business card and, hey, I've got, you know, X amount of machines. So um, he's got a nice little small rental business. And then since he has his rental business, he then does side projects when one of his machines is not out on rental. So something to think about, something that you can start with. Um, Yes, there's liability to be considered. Yes, there's all sorts of different you know, financing to consider, and it's a little bit more complicated of a process. But once you find something that works for you, renting just power washers or sod cutters or hand augers, or you know, um, small bobcats or dingoes, um, it's a very, very you know, interesting business model. It's pretty much get the contacts, get the machine, put them together, and that's it. I think even for his maintenance, um, he primarily has all of his maintenance. Uh, outsourced, completely outsourced. So John Deere, um, which he doesn't like at this point, um, they did give me a nice cup though, love my cup. Um, but I got my contractor coffee right here, butter tasting delicious, I don't know when I'm getting lunch today. So, um, so he uses John Deere to do all of his on-site maintenance. So they actually show up in trucks, they'll adjust his tracks, they'll do whatever on the weekends. So he pretty much just leaves his machines on site wherever they are and then it doesn't have a whole lot to do. So something cool to think about, you can start something like that super cheap, a couple thousand bucks, you can start. Um, I would start with power washers, maybe concrete saws, things like that that you have the, con the, t the contacts to work. The smaller the equipment, the more customers you're going to need to rent it. The larger the equipment, the less customers. So one of these deer dozers that costs 100 grand, he probably only needs two or three guys a year that need that for three months. This guy needs it for one month. That guy needs it for six months. Um, you get a power washer, you're gonna probably have to have a new customer every day or two. Because um, if someone's using a power washer more than one or two days, they're probably gonna just start buying them. Um, but it is a very, very cool way to start a business. What's up, Dozer Dave? Are you doing cool? What's up? <laughs> all the so you just rented this to them? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then you just move it right down the street for your job. Oh, yeah. Nice. I like it. This is the part where you want to go fast. Yeah. Up there. Be all right. uh, how many machines you got now? Uh, including the small compactors that are, I don't like count them as machines. Yeah, they're just little small brand. things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got five. Five. So you got two dozers. You start out with dozers. Yeah. 30, 30 grand down on the first dozer for like yep. 80 grand. You bought it for 80, put 30 down. 77. Okay. After everything. So you had you had like small amount of debt, less than 50 grand. Uh, that... Well, I pulled 50 out of a loan. Okay. And I used 30 down, 20 for operating. Okay. And uh, 
from there I just got a second dozer. Now what's what's that dozer cost per month, the carrying cost of that, that one? Because these are like contractors that haven't really jumped in the rental game or anything like that yet. Most of the time when, no. when these guys rent, they just rent because they either don't have, the they have the machines, but they're all tied up because things are so busy. Yeah. They don't want to go buy a new one to do two months of work, so they just rent. It's uh, cheaper because so, all they pay for is gas. So like that dozer right there, that guy is 80 grand, roughly. And you, uh, what's the monthly cost on something like that for five years? Because you finance them on five years, right? No, four. Four years, okay. I had to do four to John Deere four. always does that to you. They always want their money in three or four years. Yeah, they tried to stick me to three and I had to do four. Yeah. All right, so, you, so, four, so what's that work out to a month? Um, 1500 or 16 on one of them. Okay, and then what's that guy rent for? Twenty-eight a month, and now they're upwards of thirty-four and high. Because the, the economy is hot right now, yeah. which is nice. All right, so you're in that thing at fifteen hundred a month, and you can get basically three grand a month for it in rent. Yep. After four years, it pays off, and then how long do you expect that machine to keep renting for three grand a year or a month? Well, they say after it pay, like how long is that machine gonna last? You think they that say you can you'll get two years out of a track job? Yeah, two and a half. But like a machine like that, could you run it for the next five years? You run it for the next 12 years to take care of it. All right, so you pay it off in four, and then you get another 12 on top of that on the- At on least the, if you take care of it. If you take care of it, there's gonna be some expenses. There won't be a payment anymore, but you're still gonna spend some maintenance About and buy some tracks. grand every track job. Okay. And that's every, well, let's see, I've had these for almost three and a half years, and I haven't needed a track job yet. Now this is a little bit more expensive than a skid steer like that. I, I recommend landscaper guys start with a skid steer because they could use it for their own jobs. But you, well, I mean, you starting in a family of excavators, third generation, you know, I mean, you've got some contacts. So, so for you, aspect of yep. and that's, excavation. that's also why I went with the, the skid steer side of things, track loaders really, because on the landscape stuff, it's needed for everything. I can rent it and I can still get on a project like this. Now this is a demo from Caterpillar. So this one I don't own, but we're gonna run this one today, which is cool. Now what else do you got as far as machines? You've got two excavators now and one big loader, correct? I got a 624K. Uh, it's not the biggest, but it's big enough to do the job. That's pretty uh, huge though. That's like a, how much, a 200,000, $180,000 machine? Uh, right at 197-ish. 197. 197. Yeah. All right, so, so you're buying houses basically. Yeah, pretty much. You're buying houses and then yep. they hopefully rent and pre create enough cash flow for you. Yep. So the nice thing is when you got them on a job site, you're not on that job site, but you're making money. Yeah. Yeah, and then the track hoe is a 250G. Uh, that was 240, 230, I think. So give me an example on that. What's the monthly carrying cost of a 250 John Deere? 900 for four years. Okay, so five grand a month yep. for four years, and what could That's you rent payment, it? payment, not, you know, services. Of course, of course, but but most of that you're warranted. For a lot of that payment, you're warranted if you're buying a new. If you have any issues, yes. Yeah, if you have any issues. Now, what would something like that rent for every month? That, well, you can get away at fifty nine hundred with some people, okay. up to close to eight grand after delivery taxes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that one, you're spending five. You're making on the low end six, on the high end eight. eight yeah. So you've got a monthly free cash flow of like two. Much. Two or three, average, yeah. Yeah. So, so let's just say hypothetically, you put down ten percent. After ten months, you would have your twenty thousand dollars back in your pocket. You would have debt and the machine. Hopefully, the machine is worth what the debt is worth, and then that's kind of the game you're playing. Now, if something much. If something breaks, then it's kind of different. But with a new machine, you're basically putting your dollar out there, and then you're, uh, and then you're trying to make that dollar come back home. Yeah. The sh the sh and then. Work is booming, but there's such a there's a high demand for machines, but there's also a ton of machines. Yeah, there are. So a ton of the value of these, I mean, John Deere and Cat both have great resale values, but there's not a lot. There's not a. They're 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 everywhere. Yeah. So the value of them is is way down on what they yeah. should be. Right now, but the financing is cheap right now. Yeah. For the moment, we're getting really inexpensive money. Yeah. Which is good. For right now. Which, for right now. Yeah, but for a young guy like yourself. Yeah, 
they, they watch this shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bobcat's kind of the same deal to me. So, all right, man. Sweet. That's. Well, actually, before we fire this up, let's go. Um... All right. So you guys heard Dave say he's not happy with his relationship with Deer, um, John Deer. It happens. That's. You really want a good relationship with uh, with your equipment dealer because equipment's always going to go down. Some equipment goes down less than others. Um, but when that happens, you just you want a good relationship with these guys. Um, when you have a good relationship, this machine here has a zero cost to us today. So this is a demo machine. Dave's possibly going to get a skid steer. For the most part, I'm the guy that has the skid steers as far as his projects. He just rents them from me. Um, or we'll come out and operate them for him because he's always shy like an employee or an operator. Um, he likes to keep his payroll like really lean and just pretty much just machines and maybe one or two guys. Um, but this guy on this little project, this will be a couple thousand dollar project for the day. We're going to move some stuff from the back, fill in the lake a little bit, redo re, uh, the rim of the lake. Some dirt work basically, but he'll make, uh, he'll make some money today. And today pretty much the cost is just going to be fuel um, and my time is going to pay for that. But uh, other than that, because he's got a decent relationship with a cat store here, um, they're going to give him a free demo. This happens all the time in heavy equipment. Um, you get free demos from other manufacturers all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, let me just run out a, a demo for you real quick. Um, the reason they do that is they want to pull you in as a customer. So there's a lot of value for them. Um, and then for the contractors, I mean, it can be messed up to play different manufacturers, but uh, they... I see guys with demo machines on their sites all the time and uh, it's, I don't know, if you're just starting out and you're just getting going, you have a couple pieces of machinery and you can get a demo here and there um, on, on the next machine you want to buy, but you can use it before you actually uh, need it. That's also why I'm out here running for Dave today because I'm very interested in uh, basically that type of cat um, setup, so I want to just you know try that out. So the demo thing saves you a ton of money. And uh, it's something like I didn't even know about until I started getting into heavy equipment and then guys were like, like, you know, oh yeah, I've got a demo for the day, so we're gonna make like, you know, three grand a day. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like that thing's like 600 bucks a day to rent. And they're like, nah, nah, it's not. So 